Everyone has looked at a stereo system or a digital music player and seen the controls for bass and treble. These are very basic equalization controls, or what we usually call EQ. EQ is one of the most basic sound processors, a one that is available even in the simplest car sound systems. But when we create music, we use much more elaborate and precise EQ tools. In this episode, we're going to talk about what we do with EQ and why we use it in music. I'm Stella, and you're watching the second episode of Sound Basics. We use EQ to control the frequency spectrum of a piece of audio. But what is frequency? It's a function of air vibrations. When you pull a guitar string, for example, it vibrates and creates rapid changes in air pressure, or what we call a sound wave. The number of sound wave cycles per second is the frequency of the string, and we measure it in units of hertz. The frequency is what determines the pitch that we end up hearing. The human frequency hearing range is approximately 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and it differs from one person to another depending on age, ear structure, and how many loud parties you've been to. Just so you know, certain animals hear different frequencies. Dogs, for example, can hear up to 45 kilohertz. Now back to music. Every instrument plays a certain range of frequencies that defines its sound and along with other elements like timbre, distinguishes it from other instruments. Now I'm going to play you a few samples of different instruments, and we're going to look at an EQ plugin called HEQ, which has a spectrum analyzer, so you can see where the frequency range of each instrument lies. A spectrum analyzer is simply a graphical representation of the sound that we are hearing. Let's start with a kick drum, which is usually the biggest drum in the drum set, and as such, produces the lowest frequencies. Now let's hear a snare drum, whose frequency lies more in the mid-range. And here are the cymbals, which take up mostly the high frequencies. For our last instrument example, let's hear a piano, which covers a wide range of frequencies. Now let's hear what happens when we change the EQ of different instruments. So far, we've been listening to individual instruments. Now let's see what happens when we change the EQ of a full mix. Let's take the same example as we just did with the bass and cymbals and apply them to this song called Piano Sessions by the artist Benjamin's brother. Notice how it sounds when I raise or lower the low frequencies. This is the same effect that happens as moving the bass knob on your stereo. And when I raise or lower the high frequencies, this is the same effect as moving the treble knob on a stereo or car radio. That's basically how it works. So we've heard what EQ does. But why exactly do we use EQ when making or mixing music? Well, we don't always want the full frequency range of every instrument in our mix. And EQ can help us sculpt the sound image, boost what is desired, and cut what is not. With EQ, you can bring the best out of each instrument, make sure that different instruments don't clash and muddy up the overall sound. And finally, you can use EQ to add the right color to your music, 
set the right mood, what I would call the artistic side of EQ. We have a lot more to talk about. Let me know what topics interest you the most and I'll try to cover as much as possible. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe to the Waves YouTube channel for more sound basics with Stella.